if you write it, you need to speak it. If someone out there believes it. I don't love me. Lock them down like deep I bam. Crows pick at my right and flesh, distorting my image. We will stand to the rain, the flame. Am a god. Put it all in the bag. Straight to the point, lyrical greatness. Recognize the violence. Tuck his soul away. Poppy set up a shop and make a band house a drug home. Hey CCP, how you doing today? <laughs> When I say CC, you say P. CC. CC. When I say drop the, you say Mike. Drop the. Mike. Drop the. Mike. When I say I love, you say poetry. I love. Poetry. I love. Poetry. Give it up for drop the mic. Let's get it started. <laughs> poet on deck is King Riv, first poet to the stage. James Allen. Everyone, give it up for James Allen. It's called uh, Black Beauty. And it's me basically asking black women who told you to hate yourself and why don't they feel um, more confident in the world. Who told you to hate yourself? Did it ever occur to you that God doesn't make mistakes? You should realize that and put that smile back on your face. But don't paint it on. Your natural state is your greatest form. Girl, you got it. That's something I wouldn't mind waking up to in the morning. Black beauty. You're already a queen. But from what I've seen, it seems like you don't feel like you're enough. But that's just me on the outside looking in. Are you not comfortable in your own skin? Because Lord knows you should be. Who told you to hate yourself? What about you makes you feel unattractive, unworthy, or uncool? It's a shame that you don't see yourself the way that I do. Beautiful. With or without the long weave, I see it as something you don't need, but hey, whatever floats your boat. Without the makeup caked up, the handbags you got eight of, and all those shoes, <laughs> I see through. Because I'm interested in the real you. You feel fat because models are skinny. You feel ugly because dolls are pretty. You want to be everything but you. Who told you to hate yourself? You look in the mirror and see flaws. I see unique, but it's not about me, it's about you. I'm just saying. Don't be so hard on yourself, and don't stress over what you can't change, because the fact remains, you're beautiful. Keep your applause going for James Allen, everyone. Kevin, do you have any feedback for James? Don't be surprised me, I'm the first one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, Brother James, good point. I, I, I really liked it. I, um, the imagery, the it, it really kind of touches home, I'm sure, for a lot of folks here and just on campus. So, uh, first man up, good man up. I liked it. Good piece. Thank you. Elizabeth. Excellent confidence on stage. Wonderful pauses between um, to allow us to absorb some of the information and great repetition of who told you to hate yourself to throughout the poem. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Alicia. Right. I um, also enjoyed the intentional pauses that were in there. I just wish it was like a little bit more feeling behind um, the piece itself. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, James. Everyone, please, one more time for James Allen. So Poet on Deck is B.I. Poet on Deck is B.I., but coming to the stage now, we have King Riv. Everyone, please, put your hands together for King Riv. You know, it's always about a relationship or something that has to do with my life. Now, supposedly she's over me, but hold your nose because openly she gives me kisses and she tells me that she misses me. She tells me that she's open to the optional, it's possible, but I know that this is killing me. Just know I have a problem. Just know I have a problem like somebody on a bottle who tells you that to, mm, who tells you that it's over, but hold on. I start over. All right. Nah, I'm gonna do it. Just know I have a problem like somebody on a bottle when they tell you that it's over, but I'm sober in denial, and I know it's undeniable that I'm the one I'm lying to, cause even though she started fire, I'm the one that's liable. I'm the one that's liable. I'm taking the conviction because I'm sick of being sick of this. I know that you are listening like this kid is sickening with his love and affliction. 
but I'm here to tell you that it's a fucking addiction. I'm here to tell you that this is what you are getting when you're stuck in your feelings because you're loving the hit. She is my love dealer. I was about to say dope dealer. She is my love dealer. She deals me to love, then tells me to jump with her. She deals me to love, then tells me to jump with her because she can take me higher, but she is not the maker of it. She is the supplier. She is not the maker of it. She is the supplier. So when she tells me that she loves me, I know that she is lying. Mm. She's always running out of it. And I know the price will go higher because I'm paying with my soul till I'm getting sick and tired of it. And when I'm sick and tired of it, just right when I'm stepping out of it, she pulls me back, puts her hand around my collar. And because I'm such a dog, I will come when she hollers. I be waiting for a call. I be raw with excitement because I be like, yeah, I'm about to get them draws. But who am I kidding? Who am I to act like I didn't put more in this, like I didn't put my heart in it? Because every time I see her running off from being haunted, thoughts echo in these walls because I'm desperate to be wanted. I'm dependent on her drug. I can't even finish it. This is, excuse me, y'all. This is a new poem. I'm ill prepared. I can't finish. I don't remember it. I just wrote it. Let me see. I'm desperate to be one. And I'm dependent on her drug. If I run out of her, I'm a goner. So I'm dependent on her drug. If I run out of her, I'm a goner. So surely you will find me like a zombie on a corner. Surely you will find me with my heart in my hand like I am walking dead. Looking for a vial of her love and syringe. Yo, that was not how it went, I swear. That's not how it goes, bro. I just... Give it up for King Rig, everybody. <laughs> Elizabeth, you have some feedback for King sure. Rig? It's a great poem. I love the idea of the love dealer. And towards the end, you were, you got, it was very sincere at the end. And you had us sort of laughing along with you and really getting into the poem. Um, again, it's just the, it's just memorizing it, getting it down. But I like the sincerity quite a bit. Thank you, Alicia. Um, it was one point in the piece where uh, you started to kind of like flow. If that's what makes you comfortable, I say like go in with it. And, and find that find that flow that makes you comfortable. And then at the end of the day, none of us know your peace. It's mm -hmm. yours. So if you forget, keep going. Thank you. Kevin. Yeah, King, the um, poem was great. I just felt as though you seemed distracted by all this. Yeah. Just <laughs> you know, you you you've been there before. Just this is the finals, yeah, man. This is this is this is you. you you've been there. No, no, you've earned that spot. You're not lucky, yes. you've earned that spot. So just, you know, own that piece. And like Alicia said, you know this piece. If you need to take a break, just take a step back. Don't make excuses. Don't make excuses for your greatness. <laughs> Thank you, judges. Yes, please, one more time for King Riv. Yes, just a reminder to all of our contestants, please come on stage, own your words. These are your words. Black Cancer is the poet on deck. But coming to the stage, we have B.I. Everyone, put your hands together for B.I. Philly got murdered on the layaway, y'all. I was born by the river. The school kill, Philadelphia, 1970, was an 80s baby, but crack was the new high. My stepdad was the father that I never had, but he got addicted to this drug and sacrificed his family, fell victim to the pipeline of prison, which made him so weak he eventually died. As a young man, at night I cried. But as the clock stepped working, I eventually started swerving. Got caught in the law, wasn't immature no more. Got a stack, sold crack, and became addicted to the game like the fiends I was accustomed to serving. Just expressing myself, y'all. So take a moment and hear my battle cry. The hard knocks in my life didn't nudge me, so don't judge me. 
I came a long way from that kid back in the day, so your criticism really won't budge me. If I say it's you, you say me, hello. I'm not the one you were looking for. I am young OG, B-I, J-P-W, B-U-B, wild child. My destiny is verses and flow, lyrical, P-O-E-T. Lyrical, P-O-E-T. Come back up to the stage, B.I. Everyone, please, another round of applause to B.I. <laughs> Alicia. Um, did you have your piece in your hand? Yeah. Why you didn't use it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Yo, like. I was into your poem, and I, I wanted to hear the rest of it. And then I'm like, all right, because you were doing good reading off the paper. Mm -hmm. It's some people that just, this is their face in the paper, and they can't read and be interactive with the audience. You brought your paper to the stage. If you don't memorize it, read it. I wanted to hear the rest of the poem. Okay. Sorry, y'all. I got y'all covered. <laughs> yeah. Got y'all covered. Ain't I mean, uh, according Kevin. to my clock, According to my clock, we still got about another minute and 15 seconds, so, uh... Yeah, yeah. Seconds. we do. See, it almost happened to me and Lil' J, but it's not going to happen to him and Lil' J, see? I had to make up my mind on whether I was going to get paid on the street corner or take my ass to work or take care of my son or my mom was going to have to visit me at the corner. Are you still listening? Am I boring you? If you bring them here, you better be here because them same kids will grow up ignoring you. You see, when the, demon, when the parents don't do what they're supposed to do in life, the demons visit the children. The devil is making the killing. Inception is not the real perception. It's just an illusion that causes confusion that guides us in the wrong direction. It's, it's fucked up to see somebody that you knew all your... Ah that guides us in the wrong direction. Mm, mm, mm. Guides us in the wrong direction. <sighs> yeah, I, it's not coming to me. Mm, mm, mm. No. Sorry, y'all, uh, thanks. Stay up there, B.I., stay up there. No, 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 stay up there. Keep it going for B.I. For not giving up. <laughs> Kev. It's tough when you got a poem that you want to hear and you just can't hear it. Yeah, Are you, you still listening to me? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> I love your passion, man. Every I time you understand, you, you love your passion. The people are feeling it. Just, mm -hmm. you know, just, yeah, it's I cool. It it's, 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 it's tons I, of emotions. Got, I, I, I tried I to come in here. I just did a 13 hour shift last night. I came straight here and I'm all over the place. So I'll be all right, y'all. I'll be all right. We'll see you round two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yes. Wait, 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 wait. We got one more judge. Elizabeth. Yeah, I really like, I love the rhyme in your pieces. The, a lot of great slant rhyme, like working and swerving, exception, perception. It keeps it going. Mm -hmm. So keep it going. Next round. Thank you so much, judges. Everyone, show your love for PI, everybody. <laughs> Everyone, so pulling on deck, La OG. But coming to the stage, we have Black Cancer. Everyone, put your hands together for Black Cancer. All right, well, I'm going to switch it up, because last time I went hard as shit, so I'm going to try to do a love piece this time. <laughs> it's called Sweetheart. You are my good morning, evening, and night. When I touch you, you sing a lullaby as if we skip past the afternoon once I jump into your ropes of love and double dutch bust your guts, but fuck, that ain't the word, it's love that dwells in this love of spells, E-V-O-L. Evil can never exist in this bond of light, loyalty and laughter, but yet, E-V-O-L, V-E. 
me. We evolve into something new every day and in every way I want and try to describe it. Webster's can't define it because this definition is one of those joints where you'd be like, damn, I can't even explain it, but I, I, I feel it and we be vibing like the magazine. No doubt I have a queen because the love makes you wet. So since I'm your king, it's only right I'm Martin Luther. Have a dream of fulfilling your every fantasy because damn it be. A B Y. I had wings like Red Bulls, but I never knew that you could make me fly. Maybe why I, at the drop of a dime, I'd pick you up, but I need more hands than an octopus to catch your work because your value is much more than what's in your pocketbook, and that's for sure. I mean, damn, boo, can't nobody scan you. You malfunction cash registers and even confuse the smartest person working on the black market with niggas. Yo! I tell him to back off it. My lady is priceless, beyond an icy wrist, and yet still this man best friends because she gives me knowledge using her tongue, but it's past oral sex, and her morals destined to infect in my children. Man, is that will be close to perfection. I told you she my best friend. I'm close to her like a breast is. She so true, never fiction. Hugging whole soon as she vexed in, and so full was a blessing. I'm no fool. I cherish her. See, I told Boo, I know that you are blessed, and I'm blessed to know you. Because words can't describe how much I love you. So I guess I owe you, my sweetheart. Yeah. Keep your applause going for Black Cancer, everybody. Let's have some fun in this motherfucker. <laughs> Kevin. Yo. The piece took me from rated G to rated X back down to G. Yo, you, yo, you brought it. You brought it. Black Cancer. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. Elizabeth. I like all the spelling and the wordplay and the I O U. Uh, the fir first one was uh, love and it, it was love and evil, right? It was evil. Evil. I, it got a little distracted right. by that. But that was kind of cool. I don't know. It's, I think, yeah, I liked all the wordplay all going right. on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Alicia. Yeah. Um, yeah, this hat right here just describes how I feel about the piece. Straight love. <laughs> um, with that being said, uh, the, the love, the evil, evolved into something more, into the piece. It was dope. You brought the energy. You brought the swag. Good piece. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, judges. Everyone, one more time for Black Cancer. Thank you so much. Show your love, please. Give us some, make some noise. Make some noise for Black Cancer. So on deck, poet on deck is Cindy. But coming to the stage, we have La Oji. Everyone, please give it up for La Oji. Mama, don't look too closely at me. You won't like what you see. Look what life has done to your baby. Perfectly normal what I see, that's what she said to me. With a classical smile, but all the while, the scars of our genes were concealed. Do a rap of Babelville, listen to how far mama went to make a life through real. Love and perspective. Love, what a complex perception. See, to people looking outside, looking in, they look like a strong union, mama and wife. Nobody knew about the pain that daddy was doing the little baby girl behind closed doors. Oh, so wrong. See, mama ignored that natural instinct, that primal sixth sense. She ignored the cries that always came at night. She ignored the, the common views of her daughter's face that was filled with strife. Even as little baby girl's belly started to grow, she continued to tell herself, my husband loves me, her daddy loves her. Even as she was placed inside that hospital bed, baby girl giving birth, one, two, three, look, it's your little daughter, sister, sister, daughter. No, my husband loves me, her daddy loves her. But even more tragic, is that now, even as the passing of the generations, daddy's love is now etched within our veins. It's a birthmark upon our flesh. And she continued to tell herself throughout the ever-growing cycles of mothers giving birth to their 
daughters, sisters, sisters, daughters know my husband loved me, her daddy loved her. Even as people started to realize and finally see the scars upon their skin, even as they finally heard our cries, even as they finally saw the strife, she continues to tell herself, my husband loved me and my daddy loved her. Mama, don't look too closely at me. You won't like what you see. Look what life has done to your baby. Perfectly normal what I see. That's what she said to me. With a classical smile, but all the while, the scars of our teens were concealed. Through a razzle-dazzle veil, look how far Mama went to make a life feel real. Mama pushed him away, please don't make him stay. He's turned us both to our very day. Mama's crying in her bed, daughter's in car giving head. Oh, I wish he was dead instead. I'm telling my story to the world. I'm all still playing the part of daddy's little girl. Keep your applause going for La OG, everybody. Elizabeth. I was so moved by that. I, I could see you feeling it. I felt it too. Um, I, at the end, I was able to have such a deeper understanding of the song that you were singing at the beginning, reading it with all the new content. I just thought it was a beautiful performance. Thank you, Alicia. Yeah, I agree with um, Elizabeth, especially, because at first, when you started, um, I was like, I, I wanted you to commit to the intro, but then once you got to the end, like the, just like the sincerity and the cracking and the voice, it felt genuine. It felt like it was pain behind it. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I agree with Alicia and uh, Elizabeth. The, uh, the pain was just, it was visceral. Like you could just feel it, like it, it was there in the performance. And, and like you said before, like the, the intro, so okay, you know, you intro with a song, I'm not sure where this is going, and then it wrapped it up in a very painful way. And I thought, you know, it, it made it really approachable for us. Thank you so much, judges. Thank you, La OG, you great job. Show your love for La OG, everyone, please. Well, I'm really proud of myself for even getting to the finals. <laughs> so on deck, we have Casino Mike, but coming to the stage, we have Cindy. Everyone, please, show your love for Cindy. Everyone has a feeling like they're different, but from what I've been seeing, a whole lot of people are contingent. Radio hits preach your murder, and it's funny how they make a killing. I see the devil's on the loose and he's soul stealing, waiting patiently for you to slip, he's banana peeling. Sin is just something that seems to be built within us. Truth is, if you look close enough, you can see that we're all walking contradictions. You don't believe me? Well, let's take a look at some of the extremities. We're all victims in this nation that we live in. Man, it's hard to make it out the hood. Glass ceiling. So I choose drug dealing just to get through college. It's ironic, better myself while simultaneously fucking up the same place that you came from. Oh well. I only have enough time to think about myself. So your problems can't be my problems. And having feelings just hurt, so why bother? Contradictions. Well, you see, that's true, but that's not the case with me. I'm a doctor. I work hard to ensure that my family prospers. I took an oath stating that I'll keep your best interest in mind. Knowing full well I'm going into a system designed to either make you or break you. And if you don't have the funds, I regret to inform you that your ass is denied Go home and spend time with your family because you can't afford to keep yourself alive. I'm not saying that I'm better than anyone else. Most people are blessed by their ignorance, but I'm stressed because I know that I'm ignorant. The devil's playing the game and I know there's no winning it. He's playing the game of poker while I've been goldfishing it. But nonetheless, I'm moving forward and I'm not making any excuses. Sometimes you gotta build yourself up, forgetting about the blueprints. Cause any lesson that's hard to learn can never be useless.
Make some more noise for Cindy, everybody. <laughs> Alicia, do you have some feedback for Cindy? Yeah, um, I enjoyed the piece a lot. Um, I feel like uh, your wordplay was, it was a lot of wordplay in this piece and I enjoyed it. Um, you had a lot of lines from uh, uh, the poker and goldfish, I really like that line, I'm a card player. Uh, and then a blueprints line um, was really dope as well. So keep doing what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin. Yeah, I really enjoyed the, uh, the wordplay too. It, it's just it's just when we thought, or at least I thought you couldn't top the previous one you did. You brought something else out. So really good round one, really good. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, your, your poetry always has these elements of surprise in it, in part through wordplay, in part with really engaging with difficult content in new ways. I, I like the line, I know I'm ignorant, things that you wouldn't necessarily think would be in the poem, but they're, they're just brilliant. I, I really, I like your energy on stage too, understated, but um, clear, good. Thank you so much, judges. Thank you, Cindy. Everyone, please, one more time for Cindy. It was a lot of fun. So the poet on deck is Van, but coming to the stage, we have Casino Mike. Everyone, put your hands together for Casino Mike. Coming home one night, sitting on a bench, waiting on a train. I met this young girl, pasty white skin, green eyes, bloodshot red, long blonde hair, and strips that had a purple cover in her face. She told me she came to make a name, searched to turn ghetto pockets into fortune and fame, carried a backpack full of books and a pen, wrote hooks, but she couldn't keep the tempo she knew and tendo, so I think a rope ball, she said, I'd rather be alive inside the page than be famous after they found that I'm a genius already dead inside a grave. I sat quietly and I listened and she said she had a secret. She used to have a baby, but the baby's Daddy didn't want to keep it. She cried while I lend her a silk tissue in an ear. It was close to half past eight, tears falling down her face. We stared into the air while she thought about the words to say she carried on a burden and no one near to feel it burning. And then she told me she was boring. She told me she was turning Viente Uno and she drank alcohol early in the morning, way before the rising of the sun, that the devil came to watch her once because of what she's done. I didn't speak, she spoke like she knew I wouldn't judge. She continued she was supposed to raise a son. I guess she named him Lewis and Louis was the only one. I asked her what had happened and she told me he was gone. The devil took him home and home he was a fraud. And daddy didn't have a job, he gambled what he had and he gave back what he once used to call him Calbron, a complete waste of life. Took a pen from back of ear and then she started to write, Te amo mi amor. I'm sorry that you're gone, that I'm here and you're not, but mama's gonna make a song sing like a bird and buzz like a bee. Hum, diddle, dumb, and drum perfectly. At the time, it was you and not me, so hum, diddle, dumb, hum, diddle, dee, hum, diddle, dumb, forgive me, son, te extraño. I watched as she wrote, took a deeper side and cleared her throat. I tried hard not to choke. That's because I realized that her face started turning old. The pen turned to dust and the book crumbled slow between her fingers. I tried to get up. She whispered, El Diablo lingers. I was stuck. Her tears turned to blood. When the teardrops hit the floor, they burst, sprouting, turning into yellow rosebuds. Her hair grew thin and started glowing gray. I heard a voice against the wind say, it's you. It's not me between us. It's this fucked up dream and how we go about doing things. I hadn't needed you. Then the bench turned to rust. I rest again peacefully. She placed her hand against my chest and breathed deeply. Then I realized that the purple streaks of hair flooded into feathers drifting gracefully, fading to a fog. The fog clouded, eating everything. And as quickly as it came, I left and awoke up. Keep your applause going for Casino Mike, everybody. Thank you. Kev, do you have some feedback for yeah, Casino Mike? Yeah, Casino Mike. Yo, I mean, I, I really love the flow of this piece and the imagery you used was, it, I mean, I felt like we were, in my mind, we were on the, on the uh, Broad Street Sub and we were just flowing, we were just flowing. And along with your words, you hear the, the clack of the train and, and, and you're going through and you're, and you're going through for this ride. And then at the end, something you didn't even expect to hear. Really good. I mean, I can go on. I'm sorry, I got other judges, oh, but yeah, 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 it, it, it was nice. It was, it was good. Really good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Elizabeth. I loved it. I liked how you started with realism and you made us believe it and then it got to sort of magical realism and it was totally surreal, but I still believe that. You, we kind of needed the beginning to get to the end where everything kind of dissolves. Um, awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth. Alicia. Yeah, um, I like the story that was in a piece, um, the, the, the entire story and even to the part where it starts to unfold. I just wish at the beginning you slowed it down a lot. Um, but it was a good piece. 
Thank you, judges. Thank you, Casino Mike. <laughs> Everyone, one more time for Casino Mike. People seem to really like it, seem to be very engaged, and, you know, give a big shout to me when I was finished with it. So, I think it went well. Van. Yeah. What hurts the most? Images of words I can't describe. How do you help a man who hides his fears through strength and pride? This is where we divide Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Now let's take a look inside. This dream. Nothing is like I thought it was. Yet they say you're talented, kid. They say follow in the footsteps of greatness as I say fuck everything my dad did. This is me. Burning every branch on my family tree. Becoming numb to the fact that everything is falling apart. Accepting the fact that everything is going to be... Accepting the fact that the only thing that's going to be left is my art. I hate the way all these poems start. They make me think about things I want to forget. Shit, now I remember. I remember the sky. This was a sunset. God told me I would die to watch. So before I died, I watched my watch to see if the time would stop, to see if the mountains might crumble. When the arrogance of man faces Armageddon, then becomes humble. How could I plant these stories in a concrete jungle? But that doesn't change the fact that I remember this sky. I mean, remembering these nights under the street lights where young boys had street fights, where if it wasn't drugs or sale, they were just trying to determine who was the alpha male. It was hell but we played with fire in the worst ways. Yet these were some of our best days, the ones we'd never forget, but they would forget us. But we still let the bottles bust beneath our feet, weeded out the weak and jumped on stage and showed the world these silent soldiers can still speak. This is where shit got deep. Some of us grew up and became senseless, praying on the weak and defenseless, hiding in the trenches. Each victim could be you or me. Initiated by lack of education or a broken family, it was insanity. No trace of faith in their face. And it was a waste of time to wonder why, but they would never forget this guy. Goodbye. Keep it going for Van, everyone. <laughs> Elizabeth, do you have some feedback? I thought you were, you had a, lot, a good amount of confidence up there. That was great. I liked the idea of um, a sort of division. Things could turn out one way or they could turn out the other. I liked, I thought the poem was very good. There were moments that I missed because you were going a little fast or something like that, but <laughs> I enjoyed it overall, for sure. Alicia. Um, I think you do this thing uh, with your pauses. Your pauses are so greatly placed in your pieces where it gives a, um, it gives a chance for us to have that effect. And um, your eye contact is also very on point. I enjoy listening to your poetry as well. Kevin. Yeah, I mean, I really, I really believe the piece. I couldn't believe it was over because you're kind of like, wait, another one, another one? It's almost like you were doing short stories for us. And, and, and the pause, like Alicia said, the pause was just, I thought, brilliant. Just it hit right there, and you're about to start another one. So you got us on the ride real quick, and we didn't want to get off. Real good. Thank you so much, judges. Thank you, Van. Everyone, please put your hands together one more time for Van. So the poet on deck is Noel, but coming to the stage, we have Ebony. Everyone, please show your love for Ebony. I'm here to drop the mic on your head. I want to spit lyrical oasis to your faces and make your chances of winning dead. You can smell my breath. It smells like word, word vomit. I'm throwing metaphors at your head. So if you wind up dead from brain trauma, at least you get a award in heaven because I'm getting mine's here. Respect the flow or you might wind up dead. I'm trying to inject my words with knives, stabbing at your mental. I would be gentle, but gentle women never win. I'm here to disrespect your order, making you confuse your lines, having you stuck trying to use mines. This flow stuck in your mind, but it's mines. A young poet in a prime. My words drip you like lime. I'm ready to make you feel to I'm out of time. I want to bend my words and have you tripping all over the floor. Don't hit the door. You can see the time in your mind. You're saying tick, 
tick-tock, 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 boom! There goes a bond for this explosion of words, hot at the fire, giving you third-degree burn. You don't want it to be your turn next, because I'm flexing my muscles, trying to intimidate your mind. I think I'm doing just fine. I don't have to take up no more time. I just killed you with my lines. This lyrical queen trying to make you go hysterical. They say queen rule. They say king's rules, but read between the lines. This is the queen region, and I'm raining on your head. Have you feeling words that you can't birth, but I've been to labor twice. So stay in your lane, because I like to ride dirty. I'm trying to run you over with my words. Have you crossing out your nouns and switching them with verbs? You ain't know you was going to make changes now, but it's my turn. So sit there and fidget, and if you're really feeling gully, I'm fully prepared for the next round. Uh, just snap your fingers to the sound of my voice. You can be a part of my music. You don't really have a choice. Snap, snap, snap. You don't really want to snap back. You ready to clap over my words, but they speak too loud. Just let it linger in the crowd. So go ahead and make your mama proud and come into place, because you're going to have to run hard to be in this race. I'm moving so fast, I told you I was going to spit in your face. You scared? I smell your fear. It's okay. I'm almost out of time. This is personal, and I, hate, I hope I hate all your fucking lines. <laughs> oh. Keep your applause going for Ebony, everyone. I love you all. <laughs> Alicia. Um, <laughs> uh, let me get my giggles out. All right, uh, I enjoyed the uh, piece. I think it was a lot of, uh, it was a lot of, uh, it felt fun, even though you were talking about murdering people with your lines. <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> I like the fact that you got up there with such confidence. And um, I think my, my favorite line in the piece was um, the gentle women, not, like, I like that line, so thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Ooh, Ebony. <laughs> it's like, baby, baby, you need a hug. You need a hug. <laughs> no, the piece was nice. It was just so different than what you did the last time. It's so different from what you look like. But then that's poetry. It's not supposed to be cut and dry. But I love the performance. Um, I wish you had it memorized, because yeah, I think I the too. phone kind of you know, took away I from it. Sunday. Right, right. <laughs> so I wrote one yesterday, no. But, <laughs> but it did not take away overall from the piece itself. So yeah, it's really good. Thank you. Elizabeth. Yeah, I really loved it. I thought that it was a really empowered piece and that behind it, it's, on the surface, it was about the poetry competition, but it was sort of like, damn all of you who have ever gotten in my way, <laughs> you know, I'm going to take you down. I mean, I thought that was awesome. It's, you, ha you channel a lot of emotion in it. Oh, she said more than damn. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, judges. Everyone, one more time for Ebony. Deck. Getting back to our finalists and our round one competition for the final showcase of Drop the Mic. On deck, we have Obsidian Suede. But coming to the stage, we have Noelle. Everyone, put your hands together for Noelle. Terms of endearment. I whisper in your ear something sinister, shit to make you whimper through your fingers. Pierced lips with kisses that linger on your lips, written like scripture, bitten in forbidden fruit, so bitter that bloom is withering next to you. I swoon. But soft, with light through yonder window shines aloft like a cloth touches soaked to my skin. I was lost in your eyes till your limbs split apart. We divide what provided us with light. And Draped in lace from head to waist, I wait for none. And when I'm done, you just need a new replacement for my love and not the lust that you wasted on a vacant face above my grave. I was only trying to bust a nut. <laughs> Gluttony. This little piggy needs a six pack of Guinness. Wipe the grimace off your face and go get it. Some say I'm explicit cause I'd rather butter women up, cover them in liquid like glaze over biscuits. Which piglet is it? Don't matter what the pigment is to a polygamist, cause girl, you can still get your tails twisted. What more do you hunger for, she asked to retort. Give me 100 more dozen of those things you can't afford. I want more than you could give me. 
So, of course, you can send me out your corset and lay your head upon my sword for sport. Here's envy. Lo and behold, O hero who years ago saved us from foes, spears, and arrows now alone. To believe that I once envied the likes of your own. So for spite, stones are thrown at your window tonight. I hold grudges so tight, no air nor light can penetrate. My eyes alight, a tint of green for I succumb to jealousy. See, even when they don't succeed, they come to meet your needs. But me, I could die in secrecy with no one to believe in me, bleeding in the street, no final speech, no peace, no glory, but he gets to bask in his grease. A story is written, a statue is risen in Greece. They seize every week at his feet for free while I weep. Why can't that be me? And here's greed. This last piece is for my eyes only. You know they say that he, with the most set of keys, dies peacefully, so I'm avaricious. I'm vicious when it comes to what belongs to me. I'd watch the whole entire world go hungry if it would mean that I could still get to keep what I need. That's greed. Thank you. Make some more noise. Make some more noise than that for Noel, everyone. <laughs> Kevin, do you have some feedback for Noel? Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think once you got to greed, that's when you get really comfortable. Up until that point, you know, you stepped away from the mic and there are a couple times where it's like you kind of faded in and out. But once you hit greed, you kind of own the mic again. So I just say, just, yeah, just, just be aware. I, yeah, just getting comfortable. It, it's, but it's your, we're here for you. Right. You're not performing for us. So right. we're, you're letting us in on your piece. Right. So, you know, we're intruding. We, we came without an invitation. So just go ahead and do it. Right. Do your thing. Right. Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. You, you seem like you're having so much fun up there, which I really appreciate. And you almost dropped the camera equipment, which is almost as good as dropping the mic. Um, I love the Romeo and Juliet reference as well and all the play that you're doing with that. Great. Alicia. Yeah, I agree with Elizabeth. You seem a lot more comfortable up there this time, and you put more into it. Even when you stepped away and you almost knocked down the camera equipment, you was into it. So, like, it, 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 it was good. <laughs> I felt it. Thank you, judges. One more time for Noel, everyone. Thank you so much. Poet on deck is Khalil. But coming to the stage, we have Obsidian Suede. Everyone, please show your love for Obsidian Suede. Unfinished poems like tombstones, a dead poem never speaks and thus is never heard. By ears, it doesn't hear, it cannot weep, it cannot fly off the tongue or bounce to a drum. It cannot dream, it has no ambitions, no listeners listen. An unfinished poem cannot speak and thus is never heard. Like a dream deferred, its death is bleak, it seeps into a book neglected without a thought or look upon the sheets foul and fractured. A dead poem stinks with disease and decay, rotting away like a pile of rancid meat. An unfinished poem cannot speak and thus is never heard. It's absurd the way we leave these poems unfinished and deserted like sweet desserts our hearts lust for, but our mental appetite cannot balance. I present to you this chance, a challenge to resurrect and rewrite these, Rome, these poems that have been cursed by our incapabilities because it cannot rest in peace until all the pieces are placed. It's a waste of talent and time, of measure and rhyme. It has no peace, so please have some respect and lay your poems to rest. Let them speak. Keep your applause going for Obsidian Suede. Elizabeth. I, I like that you did that again. I like the Langston Hughes reference, which I totally missed the first time around. That was great, really good rhythm. I could see your eyes sparkling up there. You were into it, great. Alicia. Yeah, and um, I like the way you personified uh, poetry or like those unfinished poems. And like I said, I appreciate the fact that you, you take something like this and you say, Let, let's spark this up and get it popping again. You made me go back to one of my poems, by the way. <laughs> Kevin. Yeah, I really felt that you were a lot more comfortable than you were doing this last time. And it was just 
the flow of it was really nice. You're, you're very comfortable up there, and that's that's what we really appreciate. And just the Langston Hughes piece, yeah, that 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 went right past me too. And then the first time, I was like, oh, how did I miss that the first time? So got more comfortable with your notebook. It almost seemed like it wasn't even there. Really good piece. Thank you, judges. Thank you. And everyone, please, one more time for Obsidian Swade. So the poet on deck is Sharmira, but coming to the stage, we have Khalil. Everyone, put your hands together. Make some noise for Khalil. No introduction needed, because I never knew her. However, the more, however, the more friends I got, the closer it drew her. Like the shadow when the sun fades, she was the newest ray some years past. But now all my niggas do is smash and dash. She's the neighborhood hoe, and she wants me. I can tell by how she interrupts my conversation with her loud smell, scared to inhale in fear of Cupid's marksmanship. Hmm. Oh, arm distance separates us sometimes. By now, my closest friends do her. They wrap her in the sheets and have their way. They know she's burning, but they hit anyway. I think they like the STD she has. All the while, I'm sorry. But when it comes to me and her, I pass like Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, my mortal foe, but yet I never knew her. All the while, she sprouts kids like Disney, and all they want me to do is kiss them with my lips. Little bastards, just being blunt. Let me stop acting like I didn't want to hit it once. No twice, no no once, but I knew if I did, she would get pregnant and I would conceive nothing. Your brain on drugs. Keep it going, keep it going for Khalil, everybody. Alicia. Um, it was short and sweet, I feel like, uh, at one point, I knew you were getting to something and I was anticipating, mm -hmm. and once you got there, I mean, all your lines were on point, so like leading up to getting to that last line. Right. Kevin. Yeah, it's uh, one of the few pieces I've heard somebody, and when the whole audience gets it at once, when you hit it, mm, and everybody <laughs> kind of hit that point at once, so I, I like the way you kind of danced us around. You took us around the block just to get up, just to go right next door, right. and I like that. Thank you. Elizabeth. And what was everybody going uh, about? Was that was that your brain on drugs? Yes. Okay. So the overall, so the whole. Po I see. I didn't really fully get it. What? Can you explain to me? Uh, that's that, that's that man's. <laughs> word. I do it right there. That's his word. <laughs> Sorry. That's I like um, the performance. So the piece was uh, basically about like how I had like a real like uh, problem with weed for like forever, mm -hmm. and it's been it's so common nowadays that it's like how could you? You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then um. So then the, your brain on drugs kind of wraps drugs it up, actual, like, yeah. and the whole experience it mirrors the brain on drugs. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really, I enjoyed it, even though I didn't Thank fully you. get it, and everybody else did. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. Thank you, judges. <laughs> Everyone, one more time for Khalil. Thank you so much, Khalil. Now, last poet for round one, bringing the first round of dropped mic to a close. Please, everyone, put your hands together for Sharmira. When I look at you, I see dignity. Fear and conquer is written in your face, but you are never afraid to show it. You weren't afraid to see a woman's womb inside out, liberating parts of herself. The most precious sight to see isn't always so pretty. You witnessed the breathtaking moment of your first daughter breathing on her own. You claimed me before I even knew who you were. The anxiety of the moment made your gut feel proud. In the back of your mind, you were plotting my future, pondering the present. You looked at my face and saw a feminine reflection of yourself. You knew then that the soft side of you was now tangible. That tender touch in your heart was felt. Every time you saw a piece of yourself smile for generations, you watched my smile grow into different shapes like my body. You were my bodyguard, giving me your hand when crossing the street to your hand, wiping tears off my cheeks and comforting my insecurities. You handed your heart to me through every season, and every season felt the same because you were always there, even when you weren't in your own skin. Your silhouette outside my doorway when it made the shape of Santa, the Easter Bunny, and the Tooth Fairy. You were never there when Mom introduced us to them. 
But they all carried your scent of cheap cologne, beer, and cigarettes you stressed a lot. Carry knots in your shoulders and folds under your eyes. Fear and conquer is written in your face, but you were never afraid to show it. Never afraid to live with lust, then learn to love. Never afraid to analyze your wedding vows and live by them. Love the woman that helped you make us as much as you loved your mother for making you. You are never afraid to wear the apron. Never afraid to comb tangled hair and plant peanut heads. You lay grease in the cracks of my scout and crack grease in the kitchen. You lived in the kitchen and didn't leave until your forehead was decorated with sweat. Feeding your family with food and knowledge for years was all you ever needed. You treated us like we were all you had. Head. Like we were the missing pieces. You conceived the night you conceived us. All you wanted, ever wanted to do was watch us grow into everything you ever wanted to be. You wanted me to see that a man doesn't always look like dry eyes and a clenched fist. Your eyes had the willpower to let go of feelings you weren't allowed to show. You allowed yourself to be the person most men fear society wouldn't accept them as. Your humiliation made you human. And your family made you hold your hugs, felt like you, like you were never let go and you're still holding on to your life. Because of you, hope will last for the brokenhearted, mending misconcepted minds into prayers of joy, knowing that life is full of failures that made us all better. And strength is not easy to carry, but it's worth the fight. Thank you. Keep your applause going for Sharmira, everyone. <laughs> Kevin. You went deep, 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 and then went a little deeper. <laughs> <laughs> it is a, an incredible piece. And the way in which you deliver your work, it's seamless. It's, it's just, it doesn't seem rehearsed. You kind of get into that mode, you deliver it, and then you come right back out of it. And we appreciate it. It's genuine. Thank you. Elizabeth. You're such a good performer. I loved the line, your humiliation made you human, mm -hmm. and other lines like that. Really powerful. Alicia. Yeah, uh, I just want to thank you for this poem that uh, I feel like a lot of times men get this, this bad stigma. This is a poem that I mm -hmm. always wanted to give my dad, you know? For always being here and your setup of this message. It was such a beautiful homage. Like, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, judges. Yes. Thank you, Sharmira. Everyone, please put your hands together one more time for Sharmira. And please give a round of applause.